Okay, so here we go. Let's learn the first position. We're calling it the first position because we're starting on the note G, okay? Don't get real crazy about this whole position thing, but just so you understand, if I say, you know, if you play piano, for instance, and I say, okay, play the, the key of G on the piano, you would just play it up and down. Well, what gets confusing about the guitar is we have an up and down, but we also have a width to this too. So it gets kind of confusing. So most of the time, when if somebody said to you, for instance, play me a G chord, you'd go to wherever that G is and you'd play some sort of, you know, some sort of chordal structure. So when we talk about positions oftentimes, what we're really doing, um, I'm going to lower my chair just a little bit there. Um, we're talking about starting on this G. So again, don't get hung up in the word position, but I'm starting on the note G. So we're going to call this the first position. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to play what we refer to as a spread fingering, which means I'm playing three notes on each string. So notice I'm playing G, A, B, and then C, D, B, and then F sharp, and then G. Okay, now we can keep going into the next octave because we're ending on a G right here, but we can keep going and go G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C. Now we're not ending on G, but we're, we're finishing off this, this group of strings playing three notes on each string. So I'm playing... Now what you'll notice about that as I'm playing is it, what makes the three note per string concept of playing really nice is it's symmetrical right so i'm playing three five seven twice and then i'm playing four five seven twice and then i'm playing five seven eight twice so visually it becomes kind of easy to to see on the guitar that doesn't mean it's easy to play but it does mean it's easy to see now throughout this entire uh course that I'm showing you here, I'm going to be breaking everything into three note per string patterns like this. When I first learned how to play, I learned how to play in what I refer to as block patterns. I don't know why I call it that, but, and it was when I play G, I would do this. Okay. Now the, when I first started playing, that's what I was shown. And what I don't care for about that is, is that some strings have two notes and some strings have three notes. And it's just, there's not a lot of fluidity and there's not a lot of symmetry when I'm playing this. Um, so I just found it really hard with the way I like to play to really be able to flow across the guitar. Um, because I had to be careful, you know, like if you alternate pick like I do, some strings are down up and then the next string would be down up down. And then the next string would be two notes. And it just was, there was not a lot of, um, uniformity to it. Okay. So as I play, what I like to do is I love this three note per string pattern idea. Once I learned how to do this, it made everything a lot easier for me to be able to move around. So if I'm playing this, I'm playing again, we're, I'm just setting you up and then the rest of them will be a lot easier, but I'm playing G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, and then I keep going A, B, C, D, and then E, F sharp, G, A, B, C. So the big thing here is I'm, I'm looking at this is to be able to identify where my G's are in that, in that position, so to speak. Okay. From really roughly the third fret to the eighth fret. Okay. Being able to visualize where those, those three G's are in there. That way, as I'm playing, You see, I can direct my solos toward this root, this G, okay? Now, before we move on again, I wanna get all this out in the open so this really makes sense to you because the rest of the positions that we learn are just playing the same notes and the same concepts, but just in different places on the guitar. So this first position here that we're talking about is really the meat and potatoes of everything that we need. So it's really important that you understand this. So we have this term called emphasis. And if you think about it, if you were soloing over something and the chord being played is G, this chord is made up of various different notes. Obviously there's G in there. So when you go to solo, one of the things that oftentimes people miss is that you want to give your movements across the guitar or your solo some sort of purpose, some sort of direction, not just moving around, which is great, 
but moving around and trying to direct something in particular. So for instance, if I know where my G's are and this G is being played, I can try and target my movements toward those G's. Now again, learning how to solo, you, you probably know I have a number of different guitar courses that talk about it because there's a million different approaches to it. So that isn't what this course is. I want to show you the fretboard and I want you to memorize it and then you can go from there wherever you want to go, okay? But that's the basic idea. So what I want you to practice is I want you to get used to being able to play this. <laughs> and get comfortable with it. And most importantly, I want you to learn how to visualize this pattern or shape on the guitar. So when it comes time to play, you can look down and see three, five, seven, three, five, seven, four, five, seven, four, five, seven, five, seven, eight, five, seven, eight. And you've got it situated and you can see those three roots. You can see your G here and your G here and your G here. Okay. Now, again, before we move on to the other positions, not trying to bore you, Okay, I just want to make sure you understand this. If we wanted to play in the key of A instead of the key of G, we would literally take this entire position, this entire shape that we're learning, and we would just move it up to A. And we would call that the first position. Okay, so again, position, just think position just means shape. It's the first shape that we can learn. So if we know where A is, which is at the fifth fret, we would take this shape that we just learned and we would move it up to A. And it literally would just move up, which means the root now would be the A, which visually is going to be in the same spots. Okay, not on the fretboard, but in the shape. Or if you want to play in B, or you want to play in D, or you want to play in F, you're just going to move it around the guitar. That's the beauty of this whole visualization thing is there's a lot of really wonderful things you can do with minimal amounts of theory in the early stages. I mean, I know players that don't know a lot of theory and they play wonderfully, okay? But it, it really, the, the second half of that, and vice versa, I know a lot of people that know a lot of theory and they don't play really wonderfully, because you still got to learn how to visualize your fretboard. So what I love to do is, now we're going to move back into the key of G to keep everything consistent, but, so I take this shape. And I play that up and down, back and forth, trying to get comfortable with it. But then the next thing I do is I take a jam track and I just try and practice things using this jam track. So watch this. So again, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't a soloing course, but you get the idea. You can create really melodic things by playing over a particular chord progression and knowing how to move through this. So half the battle is step number one is really learning how to visualize this particular shape, this first position, if you will. The second step is, is once you really visualize it, learning how to play it. And then the third step is trying to learn to get creative with it moving around inside of it, okay? So that's the basic premise of this entire thing. So as you learn new positions, they just connect onto the other positions and it gives you more flexibility of being able to move around the guitar this way with the same ideas in mind of having a direction, trying to target certain notes as you play, getting creative with the motions that you can do. And of course you create, as you learn more positions, you can move across the guitar more this way, where right now I'm kind of stuck just going back and forth because this is all I know, right? Okay. So the last thing I'm going to say, and then we'll get to the rest of this is do not be in a hurry. Okay. Because if you kind of know something, it means you kind of don't know something. All right. And the whole thing with guitar playing is it, it comes down to confidence. The more confident you are, 
the more tasteful you can be with your playing, the more creative you can be, the more dangerous you can be. But if you're not confident in, in what you can see and what you can play, it shows in your playing. Every time you play in front of somebody or along with somebody or whatever it might be, that's when people panic. That's when they choke is when they, they have to perform with somebody or in front of somebody. And the trick here isn't necessarily how fast you are or how many licks you know. It's how creative can you get with what you can see. If you only knew this first position, you could still get really creative. But I'm telling you, there's so much more that you can do if you just start learning a few other positions. Now, don't be one of those people that says, well, it's all or nothing. Like, I have to learn the entire fretboard in every key perfectly before I ever play with another human being. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Because you're just setting up another wall that's going to keep you from getting to the goals that you have. Don't do that. Okay? What you want to do is you want to learn a position and start screwing around with it. And make some music with it. And have some fun with it. Then learn a second position that connects to the first position, which we're going to get to. And then screw around with those two and make some music with it. And maybe you just learn two positions for a month or two months, okay? Or whatever it might be, okay? And then you move on to the third position or whatever. But don't make your life's goal like, well, in the next four days, I'm going to learn all the positions. And no, no, no. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your, your journey here with the guitar. But understand how important this whole thing is. You know, if you start setting up kind of a regimen of practice, I guarantee you there's seven positions, because if you think about it, there's seven notes, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the octave. We're going to take those seven notes and we're going to stick them on the sixth string. So we're going to play G, A, B, C, D, e, F sharp, and then G the octave. So we're doing one octave. And we're going to build down this way using those seven notes. Once you have those seven positions, your entire fretboard is covered. Okay? So... Maybe over the next six months or over the next three months or whatever it is you want, you start developing all of these, but learn each position to an absolute level. Because if you kind of know it, you kind of don't know it. Keep telling yourself that, okay? So really important to really learn this first position before you ever worry about anything else. Three things. Visualize it. Second thing, learn to play it. Practice it up and down, up and down, over and over and over. Get comfortable with it. And then the third thing is get creative with it.